Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Continuing our journey with women who wrote history and build nation. Today we're going to be going to Basra in Iraq, and the year is 30 Hijri, 650 AD, where a woman by the name of Hafsa bin Tusirin was born. She actually was a slave, and her father was a slave of Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik. And her mother was the freed slave from Sayyidina Abu Bakr. So basically, she grew up in a very humble way. She had many sisters and brothers. The most famous one is Muhammad ibn Sirin, which is the famous scholar of interpreting dreams. Sayyidina Hafsa grew up with an intense desire to learn. By age 12, she memorized the Quran, which these days we see it a lot. But special about her, she did not only memorize the Quran, but memorize the Quran in depth with meaning, with interpretation, and with many ways of reading, to the point that she was like a scholar of reference or a point of reference where her brother, who is also a scholar, Muhammad, if he had a question or someone asked him a question, how to read this verse, he usually referred them to his sister. Al-Imam Ibn al-Jawzi, in his famous book, Sifat al-Safwa, had many comments about Sayyidah Hafsa ibn Sirin. He said, categorically, I haven't seen anyone from the followers more knowledgeable than Hafsa ibn Sirin. And he was actually asked, not even Al-Hasan al-Basri or her brother Muhammad, and he said no. She was actually a scholar of hadith, a scholar of fiqh, she was a jurist, she was a scholar of Qur'an. Add to all this, and this is again in the book Sifat al-Safwa, she was well known for her acts of worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, long sincerity. Some described her that sometimes she enter her musalla from dhuhr time, doesn't leave till after Isha, between praying and between reading Quran. She was well-known Zahida, lived with ascetism, minimum. She always felt she was not doing enough to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She had a helper in the house, and, they were, and the helper was asked, how was Hafsa? She said she was always crying. She was amazing in the way of her worship. She cried a lot. So I thought this woman, for sure, she had done something major that made her cry all the time. But then when people asked her, why you cry all the time? She said, I live and I know I'm gonna die any minute. And I'm worried that when I die, I'm not ready to meet my Lord. She actually also was described that she always had her shroud, her kafan with her. She used it when she go for Umrah or for Hajj, but then it's always next to her, getting ready for it. Some says she slept in it, getting ready for death. She was the student of Anas ibn Malik, and in his famous book, Sheikh Akram Nadawi, which he released it last year, one of the encyclopedia about the woman muhaddithat, or the woman scholars of hadith, he actually said, Although she was a slave, but she used all the opportunities that Allah gave her to learn, to be knowledgeable, to spread the knowledge. She actually narrated so many hadiths. One hadith, which is how to wash the body of a dead person, was actually narrated only by her. She narrated from Umm Atiyah, who is a companion. Then comes her and all the other ways of narrating the hadith end up in her, in addition to narrating so many hadith. Died in the year 719 in a very simple way, as she was very well known for living simple with ascetism, no focus on this life, all the focus on the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us live with our focus on the akhirah, learn from every opportunity Allah give us, spread knowledge and benefit people. Oh.